Modern believers are being exposed to more deception and false doctrine than ever before. Pastor Jack Hibbs joins us to explain why you should test the spirits in every area of your life. Modern believers face deception and false doctrine. Pastor Jack Hibbs emphasizes the importance of testing spirits and standing up for truth in God's and time's plan and the need for bold leaders to bring truth in the face of deception and lies. Pastor Jack has been talking about the importance of believers being engaged in what's going on in our nation, in our world, and he personally practices this. Recently had the opportunity to pray before Congress, and it was pretty powerful. Take a look. The house will be in order. The prayer will be offered by the guest chaplain, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, Chino, California. <clears throat> Let's pray. Almighty God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together we come before you in humility as a people in need of your forgiveness, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. For these 250 so years, our fathers in this Congress have prayed for your guidance and protection. And so we stand here in humble petition that you today might do the same that this nation and its unparalleled constitution, your great gift to all freedom-loving people, might be renewed here and across this land as a beacon of hope to all who seek peace. I ask you today, Father, to bring to us a great awakening of righteousness and confidence in you, who alone is mighty to save. Hear my cry in this hour of great need that we might be humbly blessed before you in the repentance of our national sins. You, Almighty God, are the source of all wisdom, and there is no wisdom but that which comes from you. So please come upon those here who are the stewards over the business of our nation with your wisdom which comes from above and with your holy fear, knowing that your coming day of judgment draws near when all who have been and are now in authority will answer to you, the great judge of heaven and of earth, for the decisions that they make here in this place. I offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son, and our crucified Savior and resurrected Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of Revelation, chapter 11, there's a fascinating passage about two witnesses who appeared during the end times. These witnesses are described as prophesying for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth, which symbolizes mourning and repentance. They are given great power to perform miracles, such as shutting up the sky so that it does not rain and turning water into blood. These miraculous signs serve as testimony to their authority as messengers of God. Many interpretations exist regarding the identities of these two witnesses. Some believe they are symbolic representations of the Old Testament prophets Elijah and Moses, while others see them as representing the church or believers who are called to prophesy during the tribulation period. Regardless of their exact identities, the key message of their role is to proclaim God's truth and warn of impending judgment during the end times. The appearance of the two witnesses coincides. Jesus is the only way to heaven. We shouldn't judge others, and people go to hell by rejecting God's grace, not their sexual orientation. The Bible clearly states that Jesus is the only way to heaven, and this is a message of truth, not condemnation. Televangelists are making billions of dollars in donations. Living lavish lifestyles and avoiding taxes, leading to a Senate investigation. The church in America has been hijacked by greed, with leaders living extravagant lifestyles while neglecting the poor, which goes against the teachings of Jesus. Several well-known church leaders, including Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Eddie Long, Joyce Meyer, and Randy White, are being investigated for their wealth and extravagant lifestyles, despite claiming that prosperity is what Jesus would have wanted. The speaker criticizes the manipulation of people to give money to church leaders who misuse it. All right, everyone at the yes. table said amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen to that prayer. Well, he is the author of Living in the Days of Deception, <laughs> and he's here to explain why believers are seeing such an increase in false teaching and deception and why it's vital 
that you ground yourself in God's word. That's so very important. Welcome. Thank you. It's so good to have you. And was that the prayer you were supposed to pray? No. <laughs> uh, I was told that somewhere some 10 years ago, there were rules that were established. Uh, and it's the chaplain's office, their business to uh, see to it that those rules are kept. And so they, they send you in advance. I was blessed to be asked to do this by House Speaker Mike Johnson. But from that moment on, the, the chaplain's office takes over. And so it has to be 100, 150 words or less. And you are not to proselytize. You are not to call out a specific religious leader such as Jesus, right? You, you can't mention names. Can you, you say father? You can't. They don't like you to say father because there's people it's who It's not have, the correct pronoun. It's not the right pronoun <laughs> for some. And so I, I quickly was in a hurry. I shot off my prayer to them. And then the day that I was going... Uh, I sat down and I read what I had sent them and I just, I was actually convicted. I had to mm. repent. <laughs> True believers must reject false doctrine and remain faithful to the gospel despite the constant battle against deception by false teachers. We, as believers, are called to embrace and proclaim the truth while rejecting error, guided by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. True believers in the churches in Galatia were bewitched despite initially receiving and fully embracing the gospel preached by the Apostle Paul. The work of the Spirit in regeneration is complete. So don't be deceived by the idea that salvation is by grace and works. Believers can be seduced into believing lies about the gospel by false teachers who add works to the gospel, and it is a constant battle to guard the truth and remain faithful. Many churches and church leaders have allowed false doctrines to corrupt the gospel, leading to a bewitching influence that needs to be guarded against and fought by pastors. Beware of false doctrine in Christian bookstores and the evangelicals and Catholics together document, which led to a meeting to clarify the gospel for those confused about embracing Roman Catholicism. Evangelical community and those embracing Catholicism debated for seven hours about the limits of the gospel and the addition of works and ceremonies in Roman Catholicism. Many people are confused about the true gospel and are being misled by false doctrine. Let's open our Bibles then to Galatians chapter 3, if you will, Galatians chapter 3. Again, as always, we hear from the Lord. We let the Lord speak through His Word, and that's exactly what the Bible is. It is the Word of God. Every word is true. Every word is pure. This is the only direct written revelation we have from God. It's all contained within 66 books of the Bible, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New. This is the revelation of God. No one is to take away anything from it or add anything to it or will be added to them the plagues that are written in it. This is the revelation from heaven for us. And so because it has no equal, because it rises above all all other things in this world because it is in itself heavenly. It is always our responsibility to come to this revelation and to understand the glorious message that it reveals. So every Sunday when we meet and even during the weeks as we meet together in various other formats, the Word of God, the Bible is always the focus of our interest, our study and our attention. We are going through the book of Galatians. Galatia was a region in um, the Mediterranean area in uh, the time of our Lord and the apostles. It was a, a region that had been brought under the power of the Romans. And in that region there were a number of cities in which Paul had planted churches. He writes back to this region of Galatia this letter uh, to be distributed to all the churches and read to all the believers in Galatia. What caused him to write this letter is false teachers had come into that area and apparently gone from church to church proclaiming a false gospel. Paul is profoundly exercised over this. This is very early in his ministry, very early in his writings. He knows immediately, even though the churches are truly established, they are genuine believers and they have had the influence of this great apostle, they are subject to false teaching. They will be assaulted, they will be attacked, 
And in some cases, they will fall victim to false teachers, and that is exactly what happened in Galatia. So Paul writes this letter to deal with what's going on in these Galatian churches. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel to update our best videos.